it's important to develop positive relationships with our pupils and it's equally important that they develop positive relationships with each other. Cooperative learning strategies help develop a positive classroom environment as the children learn to understand and value the other members in the group. These strategies can be easily integrated into our routines. So before we move on to talk about collaborative activities that require thinking skills and problem solving, it's important to teach the class how to work together using team building activities. The skills learned from the team building activities then go on to form an important part of personal and group development. During the team building activities, pupils have the chance to communicate with each other and work towards a common goal. The non-competitive element here, that's really important and essential in building the team. So ask them some questions about yourself that they won't know the answer to so that the focus is on the process rather than the end result. The cooperative learning structure numbered heads together is a great way to start to build up that team spirit. So let's have a look at how it works. So first of all, we would put the students into groups of four. And if you're working remotely, we'll put them to groups of four after explaining the whole process in class um, in groups of four in spain we are in groups of four socially distanced we're a little bit isolated each one on their on their own table but they can still turn to face each other and work in a group of four give each group uh, a number so each child in the group of four is numbered from one to four um, so I, as I said before, so if we if we're working remotely, we just explain all of this and send them off into the group later on. So the next thing, once we've put our group into the group of four, we would ask ask the question, and then after asking the question, it's important that pupils are given individual thinking time before they start. This helps them to process, think of their own ideas without the pressure of having to give the idea. So they're in the group of four, each one has a number. We ask the question, they're given individual thinking time and then pupils will go together um, to share their ideas. Each one in turn, first number one, then number two, then number three, and then number four. So we would give them a starting signal they would go share their ideas. Once the time is up, they would return to the main group. If we were in class, this could be using our quiet sim, um, quiet um, signal. Give me five. If we are working remotely, we would set the timer and the children will return to the group. Once we're all back together, choose one of the numbers. Choose a number, number three. And that numbered child from each group is responsible for giving the team's answer. So it could be one answer if there's consensus or summarising the discussion and giving everybody's individual answer. For younger learners, it's useful to introduce some scaffolding for the answers. Number one said, number two said, everybody said, or we all said, something like that. So, the feedback is given and then that's the end of the activity.